pressure on the PM to speed up compensation for those wronged by the post office. An ITV drama has raised the profile of the scandal in which hundreds of sub-postmasters were charged with fraud over the Horizon computer system bosses knew to be faulty. Many victims are still waiting for justice and recompense. Know that we are on it and we want to make this right. The money's been set aside. Now, what we are now looking at is how can we speed all of that up? As a petition gathers more than a million names calling for the removal of the former boss's CBE, the Prime Minister says he would support a review of the honour. Also tonight. First the floods, now widespread ice and snow as Britain braces for a cold snap. Farewell, farewell to one of football's all-time greats. Franz Beckenbauer dies at the age of 78. And... And the Golden Globe goes to... Oppenheimer and Succession sweep the board in a glittering night at the Golden Globes. This is the ITV Evening News with Mary Nightingale. Good evening. The Prime Minister insisted today he wants to speed up the compensation process for hundreds of sub-postmasters and mistresses wrongly convicted for fraud and theft. There has been growing pressure on Rishi Sunak to act following the ITV drama Mr Bates versus the Post Office, which highlighted the Horizon IT scandal. Many victims haven't received compensation or indeed had their convictions overturned. And there's now growing political pressure for the former post office boss, Paula Vanells, to hand back her CBE. Our political correspondent, Shihab Khan, has the latest. That the losses must have been caused by Mr Castleton's own error. It is this ITV drama that has thrust the plight of innocent postmasters and mistresses back into the public eye. Wrongfully convicted, many having their lives ruined because of errors within a computer accounting system. Sanipathy lived through that fictional reenactment when he was convicted and sentenced to three years in prison when the system showed money missing from his post office. He has received some compensation, but says it's not about the money. I'm 68 years old. Maybe another two years I live. So prior to that, my name got to be cleared. Like me, there are so many elderly postmasters, postmistresses there. They are named to go to be cleared for them to go and live in the society without any, any black mark on them. Some are calling for a blanket overturning of convictions after more than 700 post office branch managers were given criminal records for fraud and theft. 93 of these have been overturned and only 30 have received full and final compensation. Today, the Prime Minister was adamant the government would work on it as his Justice Secretary met with the Post Office Minister to explore potential options. Now, what we are now looking at is how can we speed all of that up? Right? Understandably, we, and I'm very clear, want to get that out the door as quickly as possible. There are legal processes that have, people have had to go through. But... He also said he would support a review into whether the former post office boss, Paula Venels, should be stripped of her CBE because of this. A move Ed Davey, the Liberal Democrat leader, agrees with. He was postal affairs minister in the coalition government and at the time initially refused to meet with Alan Bates, the campaigner trying to expose the scandal when he first contacted him. Do you regret not meeting with the victims at first opportunity? I wish I'd known then what we all know now. The post office was lying on an industrial scale to me and other ministers. And when I met uh, Alan Bates and listened to his concerns, I put those concerns to the officials in my department, to the post office, to the National Federation of Postmasters. Some postmasters were exonerated in 2021, but there are plenty of others waiting to have this experience and feel this sense of relief that they deserve. And many will be feeling disappointed that it has taken a television show after decades of injustice to get this back into the political agenda. It's only now that we're hearing from the Prime Minister about it, the Leader of the Opposition about it. There are meetings taking place. And tonight we're expecting a government minister to be in the House of Commons to discuss potential ways to speed up the process of getting justice, which for some can't come soon enough. Shihab Khan at Westminster, thank you.
The Met Office has issued further warnings for ice tonight as Britain braces itself for a cold snap. It comes as many communities are still starting to recover from flooding. The fresh weather warnings cover most of southern England and South Wales. Some of the areas, of course, hit hardest by floods. Our reporter Ellie Pitt is in Buckinghamshire tonight, which is uh, one of the affected regions. So, Ellie, how are people coping there? Mary, they've been telling me that their main concern now is how long it will take for this flood water to recede. They know from previous flooding events it can take weeks. And so the question will be, will it all go before that ice and snow may start to appear? Temperatures already dropping today. They've gone down three or four degrees while we've been out. While the cold snap will be a concern for many, the impact of that heavy rain recently isn't over yet. The River Thames has spilled onto the floodplains of Buckinghamshire, but they can't hold all the excess water, so homes have been flooded and cars are marooned. This pub has become an island, and it's the highest the water has reached in the landlord's 37 years here. We've had a, a, a big one in 2003 and another in 2014, um, but according to records, this, this has uh, outdone both of those now. And does it feel like that as well, that this is the worst you've seen it? It does, yeah, because there's, there's water in the pub where we, I haven't seen it before. Um, it's, it's up over the top of the toilets, um, so we won't be able to open for some time. People living along this stretch of the River Thames now have to contend with the volume of water that's making its way downstream. Usually 30 cubic metres a second is flowing along here. At the moment, it's 180. Downstream, homes on the Thames near London have already been evacuated. Firefighters woke flooded families up at four o'clock this morning and took them to a rescue centre. We were asked to evacuate our properties, which was all a bit of a shock and we were all very shaky. The fire brigade did an amazing job of rescuing us house by house, making sure everybody was safe. For those who have been able to get back into their homes in Nottinghamshire, it's time to assess the damage brought by Storm Henk last week. I know it's going to be a long job, six to nine months, but I'm going to be very positive about it and get started and get cracking and get it done so we can get back in. There are still hundreds of flood alerts and warnings across England tonight, but with the temperature dropping today, snow has arrived for some in the southeast and the next spate of winter weather is here. Ellie Pitt, ITV News, Buckinghamshire. The mother of a teenage boy who drowned in a river while playing with friends has told an inquest about the racial abuse her family had suffered before his death. 13-year-old Christopher Capessa died after allegedly being pushed into the River Canon in south-east Wales in 2019. Well, our Wales reporter Rhys Williams is in Pontypreth where the inquest is being held. Um, Rhys, remind us the background to this uh, very upsetting case. Yes, well, as you say, Mary, Christopher Capessa drowned around four and a half years ago now. He was just 13 years old. As you say, Christopher, who couldn't swim, was allegedly pushed into the River Cannon. But in 2020, the Crown Prosecution Service said that although there was evidence to support a manslaughter prosecution, it was not in the public interest to do so. Now, Christopher's mother, Alina Joseph, says that, is be that was because her son was black and that the Crown Prosecution Service and South Wales Police are institutionally racist. And she told the court today that her family had been subjected to years of racist abuse since moving to Wales. Uh, the court heard today that on the day he died, Christopher was part of a group of friends playing on a bridge over the river. One teenager told the inquest he saw another boy push Christopher into the water. He says initially nobody panicked, but when it became clear that he couldn't swim, many jumped in to try and help him. Now, among other things, this long-awaited inquest aims to ascertain how Christopher came to enter the water and what the others knew about his ability to swim. Mary. Rhys Williams in Pontypris, thank you. A woman accused of killing her four sons in a house fire will face trial this autumn. Four-year-old twins, Kyson and Bryson, and three-year-old twins, Leighton and Logan Hoth, died in Sutton, South London. 29-year-old Devika Rose, their mother, appeared at the Old Bailey today after being charged with manslaughter and child abandonment. 
The actor Idris Elba is taking on what could be his toughest role yet, tackling the scourge of knife crime. He joined the families of knife crime victims in Westminster today to call for the immediate ban of machetes and so-called zombie knives. He told Chloe Keedy why he's joined the campaign. What these teenagers have in common is that they were all stabbed to death last year. What their families have left of them are photographs and clothes and shoes. Joining them in Westminster today, a famous actor who can explain why both he and they are here. I'm a parent. I'm, I'm, I'm a parent. I'm not an actor that's standing right now. I'm, I'm, I have children. This symbol here of the actual clothes of some of the victims of knife crime right under the noses of Parliament should jog their focus on what can we do. But it's not the first time he's tried to do that. In 2019, he told ITV News the government needed to do more as he gave his support to a knife amnesty on the streets of London. But five years on, he claims little has changed. The government has promised an outright ban on these so-called zombie knives, but Elba and other campaigners say it needs to happen now. Andre was cheeky. Um, he was so full of love. Seven years after her own son was stabbed to death, Yemi is still watching other families go through the same pain. It hurts. I actually cry. I, it, it really affects us. So, you know, we need this to stop. The government says hospital admissions for knife injuries are down, but teenagers are still dying. Most recently, 16-year-old Harry Pittman, who was murdered on New Year's Eve. It's heartbreaking, you know, you, when you really think about it, while the rest of our society were having a great time, there was someone that had to knock on the door and say to a mother of that child that, listen, that child won't be coming home today. Mothers can't take it no more. Idris Elba has also released a song called Knives Down today. He hopes it's one that politicians will listen to. Chloe Keedy, ITV News. Well, there's plenty more still to come in the ITV Evening News, including remembering one of football's all-time greats, Franz Beckenbauer, dies at the age of 78, and... Christopher Nolan. <laughs> Big night for the Brits at the Golden Globes. We will have all the details after this short break. See you then. Hello again, welcome back. Tributes have been paid to one of the world's greatest ever footballers, Franz Beckenbauer, who's died at the age of 78. Nicknamed Der Kaiser, he won the World Cup with Germany as both the player and manager. Neil Connery looks back now at his extraordinary career. He was widely regarded as one of football's greatest players. Germany's Franz Beckenbauer was known as the Kaiser, the Emperor, because of his elegant style and leadership qualities. They were qualities which saw him captain West Germany to its World Cup win in 1974, but also managed them to victory in the tournament in 1990. He played in the 1966 World Cup final, marking Sir Bobby Charlton. It was a day Beckenbauer and West Germany may have wished to forget after England's victory, but Beckenbauer won the award for the tournament's best young player. Four decades later, collecting a Lifetime Achievement Award, he reflected on those memories. Bobby mentioned this uh, uh, game, 66, the World Cup final, and at this time Bobby was the best player in the world, and I was young, as you could see on the picture, 21 years old, black hair. It's a long time ago, huh, Bobby? Yeah. As manager, he saw Germany break England's hearts on penalties in Italia 1990, before the side he led went on to win the tournament. Bayern Munich, who he played for 582 times, said this evening, rest in peace, Emperor Franz. We will never forget what you have done for football in Germany. Remembering Franz Beckenbauer, who's died at the age of 78. 
bit of other news now. And three energy companies have been given permission to force fit prepayment meters in people's homes nearly a year after it was banned. EDF, Octopus and Scottish Power can install the meters after they've made at least 10 attempts to contact a customer and have carried out a welfare visit. And Apple has started making payments to owners of certain iPhone models in the United States following claims that the batteries of certain handsets had been slowed down. UK iPhone users await developments in a similar case against Apple here. Now, the first ever attempt to make a commercial landing on the moon has hit problems soon after its launch from Florida's Cape Canaveral. The Vulcan rocket successfully made it into space, but the team behind it now says there's an anomaly. Our science correspondent Martin Stew is here. This is an anxious moment, isn't it? It certainly is. It's a big moment as well, because this is the first time, believe it or not, for 51 years since Apollo 17 that the US has tried to do a controlled landing on the moon. And as you said, the first time ever that a private company has tried to do it. And it did start brilliantly. The launch this morning of Vulcan Central rocket from Florida was flawless so on board equipment to help NASA monitor radiation and look for water, things which are vital for future missions to take astronauts back to the moon for longer stays. But also on board were privately funded ventures including Mexican robots and rather bizarrely DNA and ashes from dead people including former presidents and the creator of Star Trek. But Mary, as any trekker will tell you, not everything in space goes to plan and this afternoon it was announced there was that anomaly. First of all, we were told that the solar panels hadn't aligned. They weren't pointing towards the sun. There wasn't going to be enough power to propel the craft towards the sun. Then we heard the battery was nearly flat, but they remotely did what they called an improvised maneuver. Then the comms went out. They didn't know if it worked or not. The comms came back up. The battery was recharging, but it's not great news. In the last half an hour, we've heard there is a critical loss of repellent, and now they're looking for alternative mission profiles. It doesn't look there's going to be a landing anytime soon. Wow, drama. Martin, thank you. I'm exhausted. And finally, from space to the stars of the big and small screen. Oppenheimer and Barbie were among the movie winners at the annual Golden Globes, and there were awards too for TV hits Succession and The Crown. Here's our arts editor Nina Nana on Hollywood's first big night of the year. The new producers of the Golden Globe show had an eye on audience appeal, hence the brand new category of cinematic and box office achievement that brought Taylor Swift to the red carpet, nominated for her era's tour film. But the award went to her competitor from the world's highest grossing movie of 2023. Barbie! That's me! Margot Robbie starred in and co-produced Barbie, which has grossed more than a billion pounds so far. We would like to dedicate this to every single person on the planet who dressed up and went to the greatest place on earth, the movie theatres. But it was Oppenheimer, which along with Barbie, gave cinemas a much needed box office boost last year that was the night's big winner. Oppenheimer! Amongst its five drama awards, best film, and after six nominations, success at last, for revered British director Christopher Nolan, little wonder at the standing ovation. People, as directors, we, we bring people together and we try and get them to give of their best. The film's lead, Killian Murphy, paid tribute as he picked up his Best Actor award. I knew the first time that I walked on uh, a Chris Nolan set that it was different. I was in the hands of a visionary director. I ought to kill these white men who killed my family. It was a night of history as Lily Gladstone became the first Indigenous winner of the Best Actress Drama Award. She began her speech in her native Blackfeet language. And this is for every little res kid, every little urban kid, every little native kid out there who has a dream, who is seeing themselves represented. And there was more success for Succession, named Best TV Drama for its final series, Britain's Matthew McFadden amongst the winners. In all, a night when the small screen and cinemas were celebrated. And for the forthcoming big one, the Oscars, plenty to cheer about. Nina Nana, ITV News. Well, the Globes are the curtain raiser for the awards season and you'll be able to watch the Oscars, the 96th Academy Awards live on ITV1 and ITVX on Sunday, March the 10th. And uh, that's all from us for now. The weather's next. Julie's here at 10.30 after the FA Cup football. But uh, from me and the Evening News team, 